Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, hanging out, watching all that stuff. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and having some fun somewhere, somehow, even if you're at home. I'm playing around with some photos today. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. I make tutorial videos here on YouTube about editing your photos using different software packages. I'm in love with Luminar 4. I'm in Luminar 4 again today. I say that a lot. Um, it's a great product. It's so much fun, but I'm here to help you kind of explore your creativity, you know, remove any kind of confusing uh, elements that you may find, some complexity, just to simplify and have fun. And if you're not having fun editing photos, then I think you're doing it wrong. I'm trying to have fun. I hope you're having fun. Let's get into it. Today, I'm in Luminar 4. I have this photo from Paris. That's how it started. That's how it ended. And I'm talking today about the three L's, layers, looks, luminosity masks. If you look over here, you can see I've got a base layer and I've got five adjustment layers. I did some masking. I did some weird, crazy, fun stuff. I'm having a good time. I hope it's helpful. I just want to show you how I use the combination of looks, layers, and lumin luminosity masks to get the photo looking the way I want the photo to look. So I'm about to hit reset, which means all this stuff is going away. Always makes me a little nervous because I got my notes here about what I did, but I want to walk through it step by step and show you what I did. And um, when I hit reset, it's gone, which means if I didn't write it down right in my notes, I'm going to get to the end of the video and realize I screwed up and have to start over. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hit reset, which is you go to image, you say adjustments, and you say reset. And I am back to ground zero. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start on the base layer in the light tool. And like I said, I got to look at my notes. So I am going about... I'm going about there in the temperature and tint. I'm gonna go 28 or so on smart contrast. Highlights are coming down quite a bit, like a negative 50. Shadows are going up about 10 or 11, something like that. Just kind of balancing the light. Um, I'm gonna do a gentle S curve down here, which uh, is something I do a lot with the tone curve. And something about like that. And then I'm gonna change this uh, DCP profile. And I'm gonna use portrait, believe it or not but I thought it looked nice. So here's the base photo and the current photo. Very simple and straightforward. We're gonna get into layers now. So if you haven't used layers, you go to the upper right corner here where it says layers. Click on that, I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer. And this is what I often do with looks is I'll do some base edits in the light tool, maybe a couple of others on the base layer. Then I'll jump into an adjustment layer and go get a look. So the look that I'm looking for is in my London Calling Pack. It's called Bodium Castle. And I'm going to stick it on there, and that's pretty over the top, but that's okay because we're going to say Edit Mask, and we're going to say Luminosity. And Luminosity masks are really good to get comfortable with. I use them a lot, but they allow you to uh, subtly apply edits because they automatically create a mask built on the brightness values of the image. So this preset or look is going to apply more heavily to the brighter parts and less heavily to the darker parts, which means it's going to show up in the sky and the water more than anywhere else. There you go. So here's before, not a whole lot. And after, if you remember, uh, when I first applied that look to the photo, it was gaudy. It was over the top. It was really colorful. Um, luminosity mask gives you great control. And in fact, um, I'm actually going to take it down to about an 80. And that's one way I use looks and luminosity mask is going for an overall mood, for lack of a better word, a look, a feel to the photo, stick it on there, apply the luminosity mask so it's a bit more subtle. And now I feel like I like where I am. And this is where I'm gonna go get another layer. So I'm gonna say plus new adjustment layer. And here's where I start doing something that um, I'll just call it isolation. I'm basically gonna isolate different parts of the photo. Um, because looks are global in nature, the luminosity masks allow you to sort of isolate them into the brighter or the darker parts of the photo, but sometimes you gotta customize that a little bit further. So I've got a new adjustment layer. I'm once again gonna be in my London Calling Pack. I'm gonna go over here to Paddington, and you can see that that's um, a little bit grungier, a little bit rougher. And what I want to do is basically not apply that to a number of the areas that it's in. So I'm, I'm once again going to say luminosity mask. Let that create and populate itself onto the photo. And there it is on the photo. If you recall, it was a little bit grittier and a little bit uh, rougher and the colors were a bit different. But I've got this luminosity mask. Let me just show you what it looks like. That's a luminosity mask, by the way more heavily masked in the brighter areas, less heavily masked in the darker areas. But for this layer, I wanna isolate the darker areas, in particular that street on the right-hand side. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invert the luminosity mask, which makes it look like that. So now it's less heavily applied in the bright areas, river, uh, sky, and more heavily applied in the darker areas, like the buildings and that um, uh, section over there on the right, that street. So that looks more like what I wanted. However, it's still, if you look at this again, it's still fairly well applied here in the river. So I'm gonna be erasing this. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna move that, turn that off, and I'm gonna erase that. I'm also gonna shrink my mouse. I'm gonna erase it from the river because it's adding too many ripples and too much kind of structure or detail into the river. And that's a personal preference. I like water to be kind of smooth and I like skies to be kind of smooth. I'm a fan of long exposures for that reason. So, or those reasons, uh, let's see here. I'm just gonna pull this down, do a little more uh, painting here. So what I did is luminosity mask, inverted it, and now I'm erasing it from the parts where I don't want it to apply. So let me check my notes. Okay, I did that. The other thing I did is I took the uh, adjustment about down to about 50. So there we go. That's a luminosity mask, inverted, erased, and adjustment uh, or opacity amount reduced. So let me show you the before, this layer. It's a little bit less crunchy over here and in the buildings and after, it's a little bit more. Now, I left that in the sky. You may want to erase it from the sky. It depends on the photo. And I do see there's a couple of spots, uh, quite a few spots, in fact, in the sky. I can remove those later. Not really part of this video, but it's easy to do. You go to Canvas Tools and you click on Eraser and you take them out. So having done that, base layer, minor adjustments, layer one, preset, globally applied with a luminosity mask. Um, and then layer two, uh, preset or look, globally applied with a luminosity mask, then inverted and then erased from the river. Okay, so that's how I isolated that section of the photo, which was again, primarily the street over there. Next, I'm gonna add another adjustment layer. And this time I'm gonna go into looks and I'm gonna go into dramatic moods. And this is a, if I can find it, there it is. That's a preset pack that I made uh, for Sky Lumen they sell on the Luminar Marketplace. And in this case, what I'm isolating is the sky. I really wanna get some more color in the sky. It's a little too bright, there's not enough color. It's just kinda of boring. So this preset or look, I say preset all the time, look is called Shaw. And uh, that preset pack is named after authors. Um, anyway, it's really got a golden tone. Wow, Jim, that's over the top. It is, but once again, let me just check my notes. Yeah, we're doing a luminosity mask, so let me hit that. And again, remember, luminosity masks apply more heavily to the brighter parts of the photo. What's the brightest part of this photo? The sky. So that's going to be a good fit. Give that a moment to populate, and then we'll make some more adjustments. Okay, there we go. You can see it's impacting the photo, but again, it's a little too heavy-handed. So I'm going to take the amount of that a layer down to 70. This is this adjustments amount. It's basically an opacity slider for the layer, which I love. You can do that with layers. One of the great things about it. On top of that, let me look at the luminosity mask. If I turn on the brush and click on that, you can see it's more heavily applied to the sky. And that's exactly where I wanted it. Um, I don't really want it applying to some of these lower parts of the photo. So once again, I'm just gonna come in and erase it. So let me do that real quick. Just kind of run in my eraser brush over here. And there we go, that's, uh, that's a fine job. Maybe I got a little bit there. And I'm gonna close that and say done. So now what I've done is taken a look from a different group of looks and it was really uh, orangey in terms of the sky. And I applied it as a luminosity mask knowing that luminosity mask by default is gonna apply to the brighter parts of the photo, which again is the sky. I erased it from the other parts of the photo. Um, and then basically I've got a bit more color in the sky. Again, it's still some spots there. You're not gonna hold that against me. I'm gonna remove those later. Um, so I'm pretty good there, but um, now that I've erased that from the lower half of the photo, one thing I notice is that the water is a lot more blue and the sky is a bit more orange and they're not quite going together. So um, although I didn't really like the preset on the water, I do wanna fix that. So I'm gonna get an adjustment layer and now I'm gonna go over here to the uh, Essentials tab and I'm gonna bump up the temperature uh, about a six or so, something like that. I'm gonna to go to the color and I'm gonna go to an advanced settings and blue, I'm gonna change my hue to something about like 19 and then I'm gonna get golden hour 
and check my notes. I'm gonna give that about a 33. All I'm doing is working on the blue because that's kind of what I'm focused on. So basically I'm looking at the river, kind of the street too, but um, I have that and I think those colors look a little bit better with the photo. However, I don't want them across the whole photo. I just want it on the bottom. So I'm gonna use a gradient mask because that allows me to draw a straight line. And I basically just painted that adjustment into the bottom of the photo. The mask is uh, covering the bottom of the photo, which th that red area or pink, I call that a red, but that shows you where your edits are being applied. That's kind of how masking works. So you can make adjustments here with that, but I think I'm fine. That's giving me a little bit more warmth in the bottom. I think the color tones match the sky a little bit better and is able to bring down some of the intensity of that blue in the river. And then once again, I'm gonna take the opacity amount down. I'm gonna to go to about 80, simply because I just wanna tone it down a little bit. I feel like the tones match. And uh, you know we've come a long way, by the way, from where we started. There's the original photo and there's the current one. It's fairly saturated and um, you know it's kind of over the top. So I'm gonna go add a l one more adjustment layer. And I'm doing this on a separate layer because all these other ones are masked, which means any further edits would apply within that mask. And these edits, I wanna to apply to the entire photo. I'm gonna to go to color and I gotta check. Yeah, I'm just taking the saturation down by 10 and the vibrance down by five. It's pretty slight, but it's an overall color saturation and intensity reduction. If I uh, turn that filter off, you can see that before it's a little bit more intense and after it's a little bit less intense. That's only because I looked at the photo and decided it was a little rough uh, rough's the wrong word, a little intense in terms of color, and I just wanted to bring it down. Um, as much as I love color, I felt like it was a little bit over the top. So that's that. Um, the only other thing I might would do is go to AI Structure, and because I haven't done any masking at the layer level, I can now use a filter mask, and I will come in here and say Edit Mask and Brush, and what I'm gonna do is get on Paint, and I'm just gonna paint that into the river, and that's simply because, as I said earlier, I like smoother water, and that's gonna give me a smoother look here. Okay, and while I was at it, I went ahead and applied it to this sky as well, as you can see there, and it's just because I like that look. So again, it was just an overall softening. If you decide it's too much, hey Jim, that's too soft in the water, you've already got the mask created on this tool, AI Structure, so I can just bring that back, uh, you know, increase the amount. Um, well, that sounds backwards. I was negative, so going to increase, to go away from negative, I'm going back to positive, I'm taking away, if that makes sense. I can also reduce the boost. I kinda like it smooth like that, so I'm gonna leave it. The only other thing you might wanna do is come in here with Details Enhancer, and maybe take some details up in like this street over here, because I kinda like that look, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Give that a little bit of a bump. I'm gonna go to Mask, Brush, and then I'm gonna just brush that in here to the street. So let me just do that real quick. Okay, and as you can see, I went ahead and uh, painted some detail in. I missed a little spot here. I'll fix that. But let me show you. Um, there's a little bit of detail added into the structures, right? You expect them to have a little bit of structure. And again, once you've applied the mask, you can now come in and say, okay, but maybe it's a little too much. I'll take down some of the medium and large detail. And it's only going to impact where you've painted it because the mask is specific to that area. That's how masks work. That's my workflow for this one, my friends. I really just wanted to talk about the power of layers and looks and luminosity masks, even though we did a little bit of other masking, we did some gradient masking and some brush masking as well, but you have a lot of power, a lot of control with the masking, and you can take photos that start out like that and end up like that with a lot of control over where these edits apply based on using looks with layers and luminosity masks. The three L's, the big L's here in Luminar. That's it for this one, my friends. I do appreciate it very much. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. If you like this kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up. I love playing with layers and looks and luminosity masks anyway. So I'll probably do more videos in this kind of uh, realm, if you will. But if you have other ideas, let me know. Drop a comment down below. And I'll see you next time, my friends. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care and adios.